Hello, my name is Cindy Matalucci and you're watching The Pulse, where we get the 411 on all the latest and greatest things to do in this amazing city, San Diego. From the newest bars and restaurants to the chicest boutiques, to the gyms and the trainers that are getting the people of this city buff 365 days a year, to the place that you want to go to get your spa on. I'm exploring it all for you, and of course, having fun along the way. So come with me while we put our finger on the pulse of San Diego. This episode of The Pulse was brought to you by Windis Fernandez Brinkcourt from Trilogy Financial Services. For all your financial needs, Windis and her team have got you covered. We have a special segment spotlighting California State University San Marcos and their College of Business Administration. Building on an innovative 30-year history, California State University San Marcos is a forward-focused institution dedicated to preparing future leaders, building great communities, and solving critical issues. Located on a 304-acre hillside overlooking the city of San Marcos, the university is just a short distance from some of Southern California's best beaches and an hour from the U.S.-Mexico border. California State University San Marcos enrollment is over 16,000, and the university is fully accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. We sit down with Miguel de Jesus, the Director of Business Development at the college, and Roger Hertzler, Director of Business Community Projects, to discuss some of the unique programs that they're offering in this department. Watch this. Hey everybody, it's Cindy Matalucci, your host of The Pulse and live with Cindy. We're here at Cal State San Marcos at the College of Business Administration with Miguel de Jesus, Director of Business Development, and Roger Hersler, Director of Business Community Projects. How are you? We're doing great. Good morning. Hi. Nice to have you. I'm so excited to be here. I have my coffee mug all ready to go. So for the viewers that are not aware of the College of Business Administration, can you guys give us a brief background on what you do? and what you guys focus on? Well, uh, so College of Business is one of several colleges here at Cal State San Marcos. Our focus is on what typic people typically, typically think of as business units inside a, a, an organization. So for example, our students focus on uh, majors such as marketing, accounting, finance, management information systems, um, also entrepreneurship. And what we do is we, we take students that are interested in those topics, uh, we put them through a, a rigorous program of education uh, with, with top quality professors, and uh, by the end, they were ready to go and, and, uh, and get into those organizations and those business units. I love that. Well, and Miguel, you have had an extensive career in the private sector in various, le various leadership roles, entrepreneurial, now in higher education, at the college, you've been here for four years. So tell us a little bit about what led you to make the contributions today at, at the school. So my journey uh, begins in uh, New York City a long time ago. And one of the things that I learned growing up where I did in Manhattan was the fact that if you want something, you have to surround yourself with people, hopefully that are smarter than you are, and also to go seek the information and knowledge that you need in order to perform. So in 2018, I reconnected with an old friend who was the dean of the university, uh, the dean of the college at the time, Jim Hammerly. And he asked me what I was doing. We had a conversation. And since he considered I had so much free time, he invited me to join him here at the College of Business to help support the growth of the college and also, probably more importantly, help support the students towards student success. So that journey has driven me here. And among the things, as Roger just mentioned, that we do, we are very focused on student success and help them, helping them see the opportunities that lie before them and the opportunities that, that they can have to network with people who have the connections that they need in order to be successful in the marketplace. And I love that, everybody needs this. So you guys offer some signature programs here, and today we're gonna to talk about two of these programs. So can you guys tell us a little bit about the senior experience and the master's experience programs and how they benefit? Because they're benefiting students, faculty, and sponsors. Absolutely, great question. You framed it perfectly, because there are three contributing elements to what we do. My role in the area of business development and seeking and sourcing solutions for the business community, both for-profit and non-profit, 
uh, revenue generating and those that are philanthropic focused is to help them solve issues that every business organization has. It's either the development of a business plan, development of a marketing plan, or in the case of philanthropic organizations, Cindy, doing the analysis to help them quantify the efforts and the results of what they do for and with the community. Let me give you an example of one. We did a research study for the Boys and Girls Club of San Marcos. I had asked the CEO to give me the economic impact of what they do for the community. And that CEO did a fantastic job at doing a presentation. And I did ask them one thing. If I, if I filled one of our rooms, Mark Stein Hall 125, with 120 of your best sponsors, people with money and deep pockets, could you convince them to give you as much of an investment as possible in your programs? Uh, the CEO said yes. Uh, we did a, a three-minute pitch. I listened to it. And the key caveat was they needed to give me the economic impact number of a dollar invested in their business. She did a great job, but she failed to answer the one question, economic impact. I said, you did a great job, but why didn't you answer the question? Because the difference between giving me a value and the investment that you're going to get from the donors just went from $1,000 to, it could have been $100,000. Wow. And so uh, the CEO responded to me, he said, I would love to give you the answer, but I didn't have it. <laughs> which is the case that I find with many nonprofit organizations. They don't know the econ economic impact. So that's what we do. That's what universities do. We do a great job of it with our students. As Roger mentioned, we use accounting students, finance students to do future value analysis and impact. We use a software package called Mplan through our university that the students, faculty have access to, and we do tremendous jobs. So the answer to the question was they generate anywhere between $26 and $32 per dollar invested that they didn't know at that point. Now that effort has generated tremendous interest, tremendous investor confidence, and more importantly, the community at large is benefiting from the increase in donor base. That's amazing. And you guys basically sort of fit the sponsors organization's needs. So Roger, how, how do projects get matched with the teams and the faculty advisors? So it's a two-part process. Uh, the, first, the first thing that a sponsor does is provide us with an application with some objectives that they have in mind. They've probably talked to Miguel, he's counseled them on, on, uh, on how to fill out the application and what to include in it. So that application uh, goes through a vetting process. Once it's, once it's past that, it's available for our faculty advisors. And our faculty advisors are typically tenure track uh, faculty here, professors on campus, they're lecturers, and in some cases, executives from the business community that come in and, and also uh, uh, help out in the program. And so every team has a faculty advisor. Uh, every student team has a faculty advisor who mentors them. So throughout um, the selection process, the faculty advisors get first kind of pick. They review all of the projects. They look at the projects they think are most relevant uh, to their experience and background and interests. And, uh, and so they get first pick, they give me some preferences, and then we go through and match the faculty advisors with the projects. So right off the top, generally a, a project has a very interested mentor uh, assigned to it. And the next step is that our students get to go through that list and then they look at the faculty advisors, they may know them from past classes, um, and they, then they also look at the projects to generate interest and see if they're interested in them as well. They give me their preferences. And then Miguel and myself and, and our admin assistant Giselle get together and we match those teams with those projects. So in the end, you've got an interested faculty advisor, you've got a very interested student team. So you're already starting off with a very motivated base uh, for, these, for these students to come in and, and uh, help out on these projects. That's amazing. And what I thought was interesting is the average consultant costs start at $150 an hour or $30,000 per project. So the master's experience program, it's really affordable. It's an affordable alternative to traditional consulting. Absolutely. Let me, let me build on that for just a moment. The pricing investment for our senior experience program is priced at $1,500 for 750 hours of student coursework. For, so for those of you who have lightning quick minds, you just calculate that's about $2 per hour invested to have a research team basically do a great 
phenomenal project for you. Our master's experience is currently priced at $5,000, which is equally affordable. And when I do analysis in the commercial marketplace, as many of you have done yourselves, a project like what we do, and I'll, and I'll show you one, uh, is usually valued at about $30,000. So we did a project for the San Diego Children's Discovery Museum, which is phenomenal. I spoke to the CEO yesterday, and the CEO was so still excited with the results of the project. They've been able to accelerate as a result of our research and recommendations. Their investment funding by about a full year and a half. They're $500,000 ahead of their schedule. And Cindy, that is phenomenal for, for them taking action. I, I do recognize that the leadership there took action with the recommendations and they were able to generate those kinds of results. So that's, those are some of the things that get me excited, keep me excited and, and get me engaged with finding more opportunities like that for our students and faculty. Well, and the Senior Experience Program, celebrating 10,000 students, right? I heard a rumor that you have your trade show coming up in December. So just touch on a little bit about the Senior Experience and the trade show and sort of what we can expect. Absolutely. So uh, the trade show this, this year, we're really uh, happy and proud to uh, partner with a local pharmaceutical biotech company named Thermo Fisher in Carlsbad. We're going to have our uh, trade show on December 15th. The business community is absolutely welcome to come. We start with a networking reception uh, while the students set up their trade show side. Uh, we invite the business community to come in and network with one another, uh, have some light appetizers and, and uh, uh, drinks. And uh, it's a really great time. That'll, that'll go on for about an hour or so. And then the trade show opens where the students have booths, much like any trade show that you may have been to, uh, any conference uh, where they have, they have their own booths where they talk about their projects uh, what they worked on for their sponsors. It's okay. good visibility for the sponsors because typically they'll bring in some logoed material uh, to show off to the public. It's really a win-win all the way around. You've got your students who are learning how to uh, manage. It's kind of the, it's the last thing they have to do uh, as far as the senior experience program is concerned. So they're managing their, uh, their booths and they're getting to know their elevator pitches that they're going to talk to, uh, uh, people who walk up. You've got sponsors who have an opportunity to show off their uh, show themselves off to the public uh, and, and what they what their teams worked on and we've had a lot of interesting uh, in the past we've had websites that students have worked on for example throughout the semester go live at the trade show we've had media uh, social media campaigns get launched at the trade show as part of kind of generating some buzz so it's it's a really fun time uh, and the students enjoy it they're super excited at the end there's a big cheer when it's all over and uh, uh, it's it's a it's a really great event and and of course we uh, encourage everyone uh, in the local North County area, please come to it, it's, uh, it's a good time. Well, and what would you say you want students to take away from this program? Wow, that's, that's, uh, that's a very profound question. So here's, here's one of the objectives and why we do it the way we do it. So many universities use a use case model in order to give the students a live experience in their definition of, of working on a real project with real issues. The only problem with that is it's paper-based. We, as a philosophy, adopted the notion that it is better for students to have real live experiences on a project because it forces them and encourages them to engage in the social networking aspect of real work in the real workplace. And it also helps identify a real problem in today's market that business people are looking to seek. So real problems with real students solving real time issues in a networking environment that is going to be the one they're going to find in the real world once they graduate. So we actually, I think, provide that kind of environment to help them grow quicker, faster, better than they would if they did not have that kind of experience. Uh, Roger, did I leave anything out? That's, that's excellent. The, uh, the case study model, which is used a lot in academia, right, where, where you start with a, a case study that's provided usually by an educational company, Harvard Business Review, for example, publishes a lot of these. And they're very useful in the classroom setting to have a student sit down and review a case study, uh, answer some questions that the case study might preload for them, or they might get some additional questions that the professor 
uh, wants them to learn about or, or, or focus on. But what they don't get in that is that live, like Miguel was saying, that live interaction with the sponsor, with a real world project that, you know, there, there's real value on the line. And, and uh, a case study is not going to push you in the way that a live project will. And so I think the students gain a lot from our program and it's a very unique one. There is a very, at the undergrad level, I'm not aware of any program uh, in this area for sure that offers that real world project based um, experience. We're very, very proud of that. And our students get a lot more out of it than, it, than they would if they just sat and worked on a case study for, uh, you know, for, the, for the balance of the semester. Let me give you an example of a project that we do two times a year that is significant in San Diego County. So we do the San Diego Business Journal uh, report, which is basically a survey of the health of the San Diego economy. We do this two times a year. And the engagement of the students with faculty to create a product that gets usually published by the San Diego Business Journal for the benefit of the broader business community is outstanding. And we analyze generally four to five industries and give an update on the health of those industries. Now, if you're a business owner in San Diego, wouldn't you like to get that information and take a peek at it? Definitely. Certainly. And so we are very excited when we publish that and do the research and we use our renowned faculty to help validate the information to ensure accuracy. And that is important. I would like to, like to add one more point too. The students who get to do projects like this, in many cases, don't have a lot of material on their resume yet. They're getting ready to graduate, they're heading off into the business community, but they, they may not necessarily have a professional job already. Most, many of them do not have, you know, this is their full-time job is, is to, to be a student. So they're able to use this and, and put that on their resume as something that uh, they've completed and it, be, it can become an excellent uh, a starter topic when they're interviewing with people out in, uh, in business community or business organizations for new jobs. Oh, I wish I had this when I was yeah. in school. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Ground. So, and it's also a 13 week program, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there's a lot going on in 13 weeks. That's right. We spend the first uh, three weeks preparing them to do the things that go into projects like project management and how to manage meetings. And, and like I said, a lot of our students don't have professional organizational experience. They've, they've been full-time students. And so now they're getting thrown into or, or put into a project where they've got to have those skill sets. So we spend the first three weeks getting them ready for that, how to work inside of a team, how to manage team conflict. Um, that, and that, and those, those classes happen at the beginning, they get matched to their projects, and then they spend the rest of the semester working uh, diligently on completing those tasks and those projects. That's amazing. Okay, so the College of Business has announced its fourth quarter philanthropic investment program, PIP, right? So can you share something about how this works and, and who benefits from this? Absolutely, Cindy. So I, I'm excited about the project. I sat on a steering committee earlier this year uh, for a project that was intended for the greater San Diego community. One of the things that uh, a basic premise that we operated under in terms of developing the uh, agenda for that meeting was that the for-profit community really would like to get more engaged with the nonprofit community, but there are seldom events held in San Diego County that allow them to get together. So we formulated this event. We had the event at a local college and had 500 attendees. And I'm excited to say that we were able to come up with ideas on how to best serve the nonprofit community. And I'll tell you how the College of Business uh, at CSUSM really focuses on that. Uh, we came up with this program to help nonprofits receive the benefit of our services at no charge, at zero charge, if the for-profit community invests in one of our programs that are standard fees. And I mentioned that our standard fee is $1,500, which again, works out to be about $2 per hour of coursework, student coursework, and we are proud to keep those prices at that level. But for every one of those clients that come in who wish to give us a project, they will be eligible to refer their favorite nonprofit to us. And we will do a project for the nonprofit at no charge. That's great. Nonprofits out there, listen up. This is amazing. So the other thing I want to congratulate you guys on because you, this college has gotten so many accolades. So one of the things that's very important is the College of Business Administration is accredited by the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, right? So you're the top 5% of business. 
That's amazing. I, I think it is. It's incredible. And it's a long time coming. It wasn't, it's a, it's a, uh, it was not an overnight success. It was a lot of planning and it's been in the works for many, many years through many uh, deans of the college, uh, a lot of support by faculty uh, to drive it forward and, and we finally got it. Uh, and now we just have to keep it. And you know, we're working very diligently to make sure that we're staying on top of the new standards that are given out. Uh, we're very, very proud of, of having that. And it does put us in a category above uh, many, many other business schools that are also, are also quality programs but we're, we have a, a, that third party organization, very respected globally, that is, uh, is saying Cal State San Marcos College of Business uh, has it going on. And this, is, th this program is, is excellent and we can certify that. That is so great. Well, congratulations on that. And also just recently, Social Mobility Index in 2022, right? College rankings by CollegeNet ranked you guys number one. I I am ecstatic with the university is ecstatic. We're all happy about that designation uh, because it really fortifies our six goals that are available in our strategic plan. And to any of our listeners who would be interested in receiving that strategic plan, we can make it available to them electronically. They just need to reach us. But, but that designation, number one, out of 1,414 universities nationally is impressive for the area of social mobility of our student body. We believe that universities exist not only for the academic aspects of, of learning and teaching and continued growth in that area, but also for employability. And that designation really translates very clearly and vividly the impact that our programs are having at having our students get successfully employed and improving the social mobility index, which in fact includes financial progress. So we're excited about that. Well, congratulations. And I'm sure that before we go, maybe you could tell us what's your favorite part of your job? Roger, what's your favorite part? So, so at the beginning of the semester, you in the senior experience, our master's experience folks are a completely different animal because most of them have full-time jobs and they're, you know, they're already very accomplished. But for the senior uh, experience folks who are undergrads, Many of them don't have past experience or even current experience in a professional work uh, workspace. And so they come into this program, they've heard about it for four years. In many cases, they're intimidated by it. It has a reputation. Our, our senior experience program is very robust and, and very vigorous uh, and rigorous, I should say. And so it's, um, it's, a, it's a challenge. It's a, it's a challenge to make it through the program. I took this class, I, I took the class back in 2004. So I'm a product of it. I know how challenging it can be on the, on the student side of, of, uh, of the equation. So students, when they come in, are often very intimidated. They're anxious. I see it on their faces. They, there's a, a kind of a confusion about it. I don't know what I'm getting into, and I just hope that I can make it through this. And as the semester goes on, and of course we prepare them in the, in the beginning to be as confident as they can be at that point, but as the semester goes on and they work on their projects, you, you can see the growth. They are radically uh, changed, frankly, over the, time, over the course of the semester. And as they get to the end and they do their public presentations, we have team presentations uh, that are in front of the sponsors. So they have to talk about their results and what they learned and what they recommend for the sponsors, which can, can also be very uh, intimidating. When they get through that and they get to the other side, they have just a glow about them that is, it's hard to describe. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool part of my job is to see them on that other side, knowing that they've made it, that they've survived the challenge, that they rose to the occasion and that the, the sponsor, frankly, has, has been given uh, a lot of value in whatever that project was that they were working on. Well, thank you guys so much for your time today. You guys can find everything on the website to get more information about these programs and how to get involved. For more information on California State San Marcos and the College of Business Administration, you can go to csusm.edu slash coba. Don't touch that remote because when we come back, we talk to some of the professors at the college. See you in a minute. This segment of The Pulse was brought to you by Clear Skies Capital. California State College of Business Administration offers leading bachelor's and master's programs, which are shaped by their world-class faculty and strengthened by a market-driven curriculum. They're dedicated to the success of their students with a focus on career development through engaging signature programs. We speak to a few of the professors to find out what sets this program apart. Check this out.
I'm Andreas Radekes. I'm a department chair of the Department of Finance. So my specialty is in banking, financial markets and investments. Well, what we do in the finance department, what we've been trying to accomplish is really an experimental learning approach. So learning by doing, we have a student-run investment fund, for example, who invests $250,000 roughly of real money that students are in charge. So they do the analysis, they make the investment decisions, and they've won portfolio competitions. They've done really, really well. So they go into the um, working world very well prepared. They know what they're doing. I know I get feedback from students who have gotten jobs because of the involvement in the fund and because of the applied nature of what we teach in our department. The favorite part of my job is to see the students succeed. When I get, when I get emails, when I get calls from my students that say, the things that we learned in the department, really um, in the classes that, that you and your colleagues taught, really got us ready to be out there, to set us apart from all the other applicants for the job. We got the job and were successful. And um, when I hear that, that really makes me very proud and makes me very proud of them. And that gets me up in the morning and um, I'm glad that I can help. I look forward to, to working with, with anyone who is here to really see what the expertise of our students are. Our students are very smart, they can tackle every problem. I've seen it, you, there's nothing that you can put in front of them they can't tackle and they certainly do have the knowledge to be helpful for anyone who needs any kind of help when it comes to financial analysis, valuation and any kind of financial problems. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anna Jo from the Accounting Department at CSUSM. So I mainly help companies using all kinds of big data to figure out how to improve their productivity and reduce employee misconduct. Our students are really receiving the really rigorous standards of education in all areas of accounting, including financial accounting, cost accounting, auditing, and tax. They have lots of internship opportunities. Almost everyone had those work experience before they graduate. And this can really help companies to like in those projects. In the past, we have students who build a cost model for the company, so the company is able to better price their products. We have helped companies better allocate their indirect cost, so that companies are able to figure out what is their most profit profitable services. We have also helped companies build a prediction model that based on internet search, like help them identify what is the most valuable internet search and what kind of search is able to transfer into leads and business orders. So my favorite part of this job is to work with students and sponsors from all kinds of industries to use their accounting knowledge and solve the problems they face in their daily operation. For more of these stories, head over to our website, thepulsesd.com. Make sure to follow us on social media at The Pulse SD for all the behind the scenes fun. That's gonna do it for today's episode. We'll see you next time when we put our finger on the pulse of San Diego.